July 8th, what's happening, everybody? It is a Monday, and it is a brand new episode of Let to Be Talked. Thank you for tuning in like you do every week. Brand new sponsor. I've got a sponsor here, Colors. I've been uh, talking about microdosing for years and how much it's been helping me with, uh, you know, some mild depression, some good sleep, some creativity. And now I've found the cleanest uh, gummies on the block, man. This is all organic. None of that synthetic bullshit. This is organic, clean gummies. All right. And here it is. Colors gummies.net that's c-o-l-o-r-s-g-u-m-m-i-e-s dot net get yourself a deal by putting in the code dean and uh i'll tell you right now it is all organic like i said a lot of this stuff out there i didn't know until the last couple of years that there is synthetic psilocybins and synthetic uh, you know, all kinds of stuff people are using out there, but you got to go organic when you get down into some, uh, you know, dosing a dose of colors is their Instagram, a dose of colors. So there you go, man. Use the code Dean and get yourself a deal. I'm glad you're here today. I am, uh, on my first day here in Las Vegas, Nevada which is an interesting animal because I flew in 4th of July to see uh, Dead & Co. real quick at the Sphere. And then I, I flew back because no way was I going to stay in Vegas since I'm going to be here seven days. I wasn't going to stay three more days. Ten days in Vegas? No fucking way. Just go ahead and shoot yourself, man. It is 120 degrees out. I don't know how anybody does it. You know, all those kind of sunset strip rockers moved out to Vegas. It's great. I love it out here, man. It's cheap. It's good. It's like, you know, more power to you, man. But uh, I absolutely love Vegas for three things. One, the comedy cellar. I love doing comedy here. It is a fantastic room, and it is a true comedy crowd. And two, I love the sphere. Unreal, man. We'll get into that uh, again in a minute. Of course, this is the second time I've gone. I saw you too. And then I saw, of course, uh, Dead & Co. a couple nights ago. And then the Pinball Museum. Those are the three things that I do in Vegas, and that's really it. It is uh, a, not a town for me. And if you love it, great. I have friends that live out here and they love it. And I totally understand. But I, uh, you know, I can't do the heat. And uh, I realized that, you know, I was like, well, I want to live out in Joshua Tree later in life or Palm Springs. You know, all those old people, they move to where it's really fucking hot. I'm 58. I'm fucking old. You see my beard? It's ghost white. You know, <laughs> but I don't need it hotter. I grew up in the Bay Area, spent most of my life in San Francisco, right out there on 10th Avenue and uh, nice, cool breeze, you know, foggy most of the day, a uh, slight fog. I didn't live deep in the fog. I lived in that kind of uh, inner Richmond district where it wasn't super foggy. And, uh, you know. I enjoy that. Actually, I realize it. You know, I looked at stuff like Portland and shit like that. I, I don't like rain. I hate rain. You know, I, I, I like it. We need rain, but I don't like to live in rain. Um, so I don't know. Los Angeles seems to be the uh, pretty uh, pleasing climate, although it was fucking blazing in L.A. all weekend also. So no escape, but it's not one hundred and twenty. That is for sure. That's absurd. 120. I remember back in 1999, I uh, went to go see Bruce Springsteen at UNLV in Las Vegas. 
on the 99 reunion tour with the E Street Band. And uh, which, by the way, E Street now at their age stands for elderly band. <laughs> elderly, the elderly street band. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, I rode my motorcycle. I got on the Harley. I left about 10 a.m. to ride out to Vegas solo. Going to go see the E Street Band. And I'm riding. And I get about three hours into the ride. And I'm like, you know what? It's pretty fucking hot. It's got to be like 90. And, you know, I'm sweating on my bike and I'm riding a Harley, the V twin, the fucking heat's coming off the engine. That's the thing about motorcycles. The engine is on your ball sack. You're just fucking, you're on the engine. So, uh, I'm riding. I keep telling myself, you know, it's gotta be about, it's got, maybe it's a, maybe it's about 95. It's pretty fucking hot. So if you've ever drove to Vegas, you know what I'm talking about. I slowly start coming down this uh, long straightaway to where you get to this uh, area called Baker. And there's a giant, giant thermometer. And I'm looking and I'm looking and I go, what, what the fuck does that say? And it said 117. Now, yesterday they said Vegas is going to break the record of 117. That was the hottest it ever been out there. Uh, with today being 120, they said. And I was like, wait, I was here that fucking time. It was 117. So as soon as I saw that um, thermometer, immediately now it's in my fucking head. Oh my God, it's one fucking 17. I'm going to die of heat stroke. I'm riding. I'm not going to fucking make it. Oh, my brain is just going into full on meltdown. Uh, and all of a sudden, it seems like I'm extra sweating now. So I make it to UNLV, drinking about 40 fucking waters. Hold on, I get mm -hmm. Sorry, if you're listening to the audio, I just hit off some water. I make it to UNLV. I go in. I watch Bruce. He plays for four hours. I step outside of the venue, and it has cooled down to a nice 100 degrees. 100 at 11 at night. And I just said to myself, you know what, man? No way am I fucking riding back tomorrow in that heat again and i just got on the bike and rode four hours home and there were times where i was kind of falling asleep on a bike believe it or not man the hypnotic sound of the engine and being extremely tired and heat exhausted i was just riding like mm. and I, I fucking oh oh shit I'll tell you the scariest thing besides when I got ran over on my motorcycle by the meth head. So I'm riding home and I'm just cooking and a fucking jackrabbit comes across the highway. Uh, this is on the way home from Vegas at like one in the morning. And I go, it goes right by me. And I thought to myself, Oh, cool. I missed it, but I didn't. He missed my front tire, like mm, perfect timing. And he went under my back tire and it threw the fucking bike up into the fucking air, quote unquote, a bunny hop. <laughs> I don't, I mean, if there was ever a bunny hop, it was fucking now through the bike up. I'm doing like 80 and it starts fucking bouncing and bouncing. I go, oh, I'm going to fucking die. Not only uh, am I falling asleep at the bars, not the wheel, because I'm on the fucking motorcycle. I'm falling asleep at the bars. Now it's fucking bouncing. And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm going to die. And the only thing that saved me was my hand fell off the bar, off the throttle, and it went and straightened out. And let me tell you, I was fucking wide awake after that and rode home. And it was the uh, it was the dumbest thing I've ever done, uh, a like a 12 hour, 15 hour full day out to Vegas concert home, bunny hop, unreal.
So I, you know, I can't do the heat. I can't do the heat. And, um, and I've said it before, I don't like cigarettes. There's a lot of cigarettes in Vegas. It's fucking 1972 when you're walking around in Vegas, but I do love the comedy and I wouldn't mind doing a residency in Vegas. Uh, like the bands do like, uh, you know, you two or, or dead and co or, or any of the people that, uh, play Vegas for Lady Gaga, Adele, because when I go to Vegas and I'm working on comedy, it's a focused boot camp. I'm up in my room during the day. I'm looking at all my notes from the last couple of years. I'm listening to sets. I can't stand the casino. So I'm in my room. I'm focused. I'm like, okay, we're here to fucking work. And I seem to get, really good really quick on new stuff while i'm here because i'm focused and uh so you know if i came like once a month out here for seven days i'd be like a fucking monster man at the end of the year you'd be like well here's my new hour you know so uh i do love it for that and i do love the uh, layout of the room so i'm out here if you guys are in the nevada area or whatever i'm doing uh 14 shows starting tonight, two a night at the cellar at the Rio hotel. And they've remodeled the rooms at the Rio. And, uh, that's pretty fucking cool. And I got a good view of, uh, the imploded Tropicana where they're trying to build that, that, uh, Oakland A's slash Las Vegas A's stadium now. And, uh, I, I, I heard that the owner just doesn't have the money. So they're just in this fucking flux right now. It's a, what a shit show major league baseball is these days. It's nobody really talks about it. Nobody ever really watches it. It's, it's sad what it's become. I think major league baseball should be summer only. It should be June, July, August world series, September. That's it. It's a summer fucking thing. When I was a kid, I played a little league in the summer. It was so fucking great. That's all we need. Do 55 games, then playoffs, World Series. It's too long. Stadiums are too big. No one's going. I'm looking at this footage. There's just nobody at games unless you got the Yankees or the Dodgers, a couple premium um, stadiums, you know, uh, Pac Bell whatever it's called now, my favorite in San Francisco, it's fucking 18 different names, but um, that's, that's really it, man. Baseball. It is sad. It is. Uh, it feels like it's a dying, dying sport. I guess they make money on TV and all that. I get it. They don't really care if people come to the stadium, but I couldn't imagine. I was watching this festival, uh, the Essex festival in new Orleans, over the weekend, it was in an arena and Busta Rhymes, all these people were playing. It was the 30 year anniversary. And there was like 3000 people maybe in the, in the arena and they were scattered. They didn't even say like, Hey, we didn't sell enough tickets. Everybody come down to the floor. They didn't even say that. I don't, I don't fucking, my point is you're playing baseball. You're in a giant fucking stadium and at points, sometimes the A's have like 700 people watching them. That's absurd. So I don't know what they're going to do, but uh, we'll see if this uh, stadium gets built out here in, um, in Vegas because the renderings are fantastic. And uh, it'll just be another cool place for events. You know, they got the Raiders. They do events there. They, if they have the A's. And then they got the shark or not the shark tank. Sorry. The, um, the Vegas, uh, whatever they're called golden Knights hockey team, T-Mobile arena, all of them, all of them fail in comparison to the sphere. Once again, I will, uh, tell you this again. And I went crazy over it at, uh, when I saw you too. There is, and I'm going to tell you this right now. I could fucking post hundreds of videos. You can watch videos. You can check out YouTube until you are in the sphere watching a band 
you will never understand how fucking light years it away away it is to any goddamn concert ever starting six months ago when they opened it with you too. I mean, I'm telling you, festivals to me, that is burnt. Festivals are are done. It's just a, a money grab and it's it's not pleasant. When you're young, it's great. Or when it's something special like uh, that power trip where it's two bands a night and you're outside, you're seeing two giant headliners. If it's something like that, but if it's just a Coachella or Bonnaroo or any of these where they got 80 bands and porta potties and fucking mud and bugs and $65 waters and all that shit. No, man. Let me tell you. The sphere. I just cannot explain to you what it sounds like, what it looks like, and what it feels like. It is a goddamn another level, and I've said it over and over and over after you two, and I will say it again. And both shows, if you go, well, who was better? What was better? Both were so completely different and out of this world. They're both number ones to me. And and Dead and Co. Right now, like I, I, you know, you know, I do that bit. Don't fall for the uh, farewell tour. I fell for it. I went out to uh, San Francisco. I flew out, saw them real quick. Flew home and drove to Vegas to do shows. That was the last time I was in Vegas. And I, you know, I thought I was seeing the last show of Dead and Co. And uh, and up until then, that was the greatest Dead and Co. show I'd ever seen because Jay Lane plays drums now and the band is just completely a different band it is uh it is like seeing this is fourth of july night that that show at pack bell or san fran whatever it's called that show is next level but this one was like i don't even know you know what the fuck to say and i wish i could interview john mayer again i have so many questions rehearsals what was that like because the way they're playing is so telepathic now it is unreal i felt like at times <clears throat> excuse me i was seeing uh miles davis meets steely dan meets 69 to 72 dead meets complete just jazz fusion I, I i can't even tell you the level of playing it is bizarre between o'teal and jeff the keyboard player jay the new drummer and and um and john mayer it's it's fucking disturbing these guys and it, it reminds me a lot of acdc right now you get this new blood in there they're younger and they've uh, they played all their lives, um, influenced by the dead, or with ACDC, Chris Cheney and, and their drummer, influenced by ACDC, and and uh, and then they just take all of their fucking next level skills and add it to the dead tunes, and you're just going like, I, I mean, at points. At points, I was laughing. I just couldn't even believe. And, and I will say this. I was talking to my buddy Steve. We went together. And, um, and I get it. I get it. I get you're like, ah, fuck, I don't like John Mayer. Oh, I don't like the dead. Fuck all that shit. I get it. I was there. I was once dumb, too. I was small-minded. Levels of jealousy. But I'm going to tell you this right now. At 58, these are the guitar players for me. And uh, the only one I never saw was Stevie Ray Vaughan. Okay? And look, Stevie Ray is unreal. He was the greatest Texas blues rock and roll guitar player ever. I've watched hours of him. His tone was amazing. His fucking style. His singing. His guitar, everything was cool about him. His outfits. 
But for me, I'm telling you, man, John Mayer is doing shit that I've never seen in the, what, been going to concerts since I was uh, 12. Whatever that is, I'm 58. I'm not going to add it up right now because I'm fucking deep into this thought. But I've seen all the guitar players. And what he's doing right now is so fucking incredible. At points, he's playing straight up chicken picking country, you know, 50s country leads. Authentic. It's not like, oh, the guy learned some country licks. And then he'll be doing some Gilmore-esque, psychedelic, slippery leads. Then he'll go into a Jerry. Bum, 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 bum. Then he'll get into a John Mayer. He'll mix them all up and fucking bring it out. And it's just him. It's not like, you know, somebody went like, uh, yeah, watching fucking John Mayer. It's like, you know, it's like seeing, what did this, this guy fucking say? These people, man, they just, you know, they, I truly believe if John Mayer was just a different guy that like, that didn't get judged for his early body as a wonderland stuff. Um, I truly believe that people would call this guy the fucking greatest of all time. And, you know, people, oh, come on, Dave, fucking Hendrix. You know, fucking, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, man, I get it. You know, I'm telling you, my guys are Eddie Van Halen at 58 now, uh, David Gilmore, and John Mayer. So hold on, let me get this here. So, hold on. I posted up uh, a clip. That'll blow your fucking mind. I put, now this is what I call fireworks. Could be the best tone I've heard since Van Halen's Fair Warning Tour. John Mayer's tone is fucking unreal. People are like, oh yeah, well, you know, he's got about 700K in uh, equipment up there. Hey man, I could have $2 million in equipment up there. I wouldn't even be able to play one minute of what this fucking guy's doing. And 90% of the people in the guitar world will never, ever even come. 99% won't even come close, uh, half as good as him. Um, you know, look at this guy. Guitar does sound good, but having a dumble doesn't hurt. Hey, dummy, I've seen this guy with dumbles. I've seen him with super reverbs. I've seen him with Paul Reed Smith amps. I've seen him with... Uh, uh, Fender Twin, I've seen him with, uh, what else did I see him with? Uh, deluxe Reverb, it doesn't matter. It's like the time I saw um, uh, Billy Gibbons, and he's playing a plastic Gretsch, and it sounds exact to Billy Gibbons. And, you know, here's a man that grew up playing Pearly Gates as 59 Paul, but he's playing a plastic guitar, it's in the fingers, as cliche as that might sound. It's in the fingers, man. I don't care what he plays. It really is, though, man. Holy shit, this guy. Um, and some people were, some people were fucking hip to like me. You know, had no idea he was this amazing. This guy here, Johnny Insta, sounds thin to me. Yeah, from a guy who's down at fucking Guitar Center on the weekends. You know, looking around to see if anybody's noticing his uh, his fucking, you know, his lick. Oh, that's a tone right there. You get a fucking clawing pedal and you get a fucking blah, blah, blah. Um, anyway, some people are, they, you know, they're dumb. And I get it. I was dumb for a while. But, um, you know, it's fucking crazy. Let's see here. Um, I'm trying to find this one guy's quote. A lot of positive though, which is nice. Um, you know, let's see. He's been nothing short of amazing in Dead and Co., which is totally true, man. It's totally true. If you look at all the years he's playing Dead and Co., where they're at right now, all the guys, 
It's fucking disturbing, man. O'Teal on base. This guy. Unreal, man. Let's see. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to fucking find it. I'm sorry, guys. It's just, here's a guy. Tone is in the fingers. I think the best guitar tone I ever heard was Michael Landau or Scott Henderson at the bait. <laughs> Um, let's see. Let's see. Who's, who's that playing guitar? And why is everyone talking about how good he is? He's playing as if he is desperate for attention. This fucking idiot. Sometimes I'm blown away by the people that follow me. I'm like, who are these guys? Okay. Here's the quote that just made me think this guy's just a dick. That's what I call the equivalent of seeing Taylor Swift front Blondie. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, you know? Um, this guy, is, he's, he's right. Criminally underrated. One of the best of our time. Anyway, I'm going to get out of this uh, John Mayer fucking... I'm not, like, kissing his ass or, or fucking, you know, uh, being some kind of brown noser. But I'm telling you, man... I was standing there watching this goddamn fucking show and, and losing my mind. And then the visuals that Dead & Co. had, me being from the Bay Area, watching all the incredible history in video, like the show starts, you know, on Hate Street in front of their fucking house that they lived in, it starts. The band comes on, the screen opens up, and it feels like you're on Hate Street. These visuals are so intense at times that I laugh like I'm on mushrooms. I'm just watching this laughing like, this is fucking insane. And then, of course, they had that wall of sound. Remember I had the guy on the podcast that, built the mini wall of sound. They had the mini wall of sound. They had a little museum at the sphere, uh, an amazing museum. And um, so at one point the band's playing on stage and on the screens, it starts building the wall of sound. Now I never got to see the wall of sound, which is a, a, a bummer, but now I feel like I really did because it was so three dimensional and real I was looking at it like, this is the fucking wall of sound right here. And man, the sphere sound is, you know, their, their whole thing was to make the ultimate sound system, the wall of sound. And at the sphere, they're playing in the ultimate fucking sound system. It is unreal. Now, here's a little heads up. I don't ever really eat pizza ever in my life. I don't eat any kind of junk anymore. But that day in Vegas, I was like, fuck it. During drums in space, which is the drum jam and everything, uh, we got up and we went and got a piece of pizza. Now, we had smelled this woman eating pizza when we walked by and we're like, God damn, that smells fucking good. It was like it was like a, 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 a waft of crushing black hash. You know, like, you know, when you smell that, you're like, oh, that's some fucking Lebanese hash right there from the seventies. That was what it was equivalent to. It was just like pepperoni fucking steam going right through our noses. And we were just like, Oh, pizza. So wall of sound hits and we go out in the hallway and we're like, let's get a piece of pizza. And we go to this place in the sphere called rock pizza. And I'm going to tell you this could be the best pizza I ever fucking had. Yeah, you, you know, oh, fuck, now you're really fucking crazy. Best pizza at a fucking concert venue? Dude, you haven't been to fucking Jimmy Dango's in fucking Upper East Side. Well, you haven't been to fuck. I've had all the pizza. I've been to all those fucking places. The place where Marin and I went and they fucking invented pizza or whatever. I've ate at Joe's. I've ate all the fucking ones in New York. I've ate pizza, uh, Prince's Street, Prince Street pizza. I've had fucking truck stop pizza. I've had some 7-Eleven fucking pizza. 
I've had fucking microwave pizza back when I was fucking working construction. This pizza was fucking insane. And it wasn't even that expensive. It was like 10 bucks or something for a giant fucking slice. Holy shit, this pizza, man. Pizza is the fucking long going battle. Pizza and burritos will just, people will just lose their minds over fighting you. It's almost like the Biden Trump, uh, the Trumpers and the, and the, the lefties and the righties. Pizza, you bring up pizza at a party and people, will, there could be a divorce. There could be fist fights. But I will tell you this right now. This fucking pizza at the sphere. I, I, I'm telling you, man, I don't even want to see. I told you before, I've got like four concerts in me. I'm not really going to see any more concerts unless it's in the sphere. And, and, and it, that is so how fucking next level it is. And it's so much fun. It reminds me of when I first started going concerts as a kid, how exciting it was. Everything was new, you know? Whoa, fucking, you know, sound system. Oh, the band's right there. Lasers. Whoa, fire. This is like all new to where you're just going like, at, at times, you don't even know where you're at. I saw a guy while we were eating our fucking insane uh, best pizza ever uh, in the hallway. This guy came rolling out, and you could tell he fucked around with some acid and, and underestimated how insane the visuals are in the sphere. Like, if you've never been, you have no idea. So you're like, oh, I'll drop a little acid or mushrooms and go in and, and have a cool trip. These fucking graphics could eat you alive if you're on acid. I mean, at one point they had the fucking skeleton, you know, the, the Grateful Dead skeleton, and it was walking out at you. And it felt like it was coming right on you. I mean, fucking giant. The screens are... It, the screen and the whole place is a screen. It's not like a couple concert screens. Like you've seen the entire place is a round fucking screen. So when something comes at you, you're going like, Oh fuck, this thing's coming at me. So if you're on some serious fucking micro dot blue, willy fucking hate street, triple surprise, it's going to take you out. So this guy comes rolling out his pants are, are fucking halfway off. He's just hanging crack like a bad fucking plumber. And he's, he's just looking down like, oh, oh, no, make it go away. He was just fucking torched. At one point, we're watching the band, and, and they, they drop a, like a disco ball, and it looked like the fucking disco ball was right in front of us, like you could just grab it. It's 3D without glasses. I don't know how they're doing this. But so you're looking at this and we're in space. The band's playing. It's all black in the sphere. And out of nowhere behind us, a satellite comes by. And you go like, whoa, fuck. It, I mean, they could do earthquake simulations in there. They could do shooting stars. They could do fucking guns. and sh I mean, this shit is crazy, man. So I couldn't imagine having a bad trip in there. It is fucking nuts. Also, if you're out of shape, you're not going to be able to handle the uh, steps at the sphere, you know, going up to your seat, man. It's like straight up like red rocks, but even more of a pitch. And uh, we could see people just kind of fucking wobbling and shit, man. There was some serious drugs going down in there. Fuck. I'm still kind of, hi, Gertie. Gertie's right here. She's looking at me like, this guy's going fucking nuts. Anyway, it was, uh, it was one of the greatest nights again. And, uh, you know, you two now dead and co. 
I'm hoping for Tool. I'm hoping for some kind of Pink Floyd thing, a Gilmore or Roger Waters. I'm hoping for uh, who else? Oh, like a, a Metallica doing uh, like Injustice for All from top to bottom in there. Um, you know, it's uh, it's really, really a spectacular, spectacular venue. And obviously, I've talked about it again. And uh, I've gone crazy. Tip for you. Here you go. Tickets are a lot of money. But if you have access, if you're pretty close to Vegas, say a Phoenix, an L.A., a San Francisco or whatever, just look at a ticket the, the day of or the day before. Our seats were like 800 and... There were seats in there for, uh, right in our area for 300 the day of the show. So just get a ticket like that day and just go, I'm out of here. Just open up your fucking app on a Friday morning. Go, oh shit, there's a ticket right there. Two for the floor was going for like a hundred bucks. Tickets on the floor, hundred bucks, man. So anyway, uh, that's a little hack for you. Woo, man, I'm still kind of fucking uh, torched from it, too, man. It really, really takes a lot out of me. Uh, I wanted to I wanted to give a hats off to uh, Def Leppard. They uh, opened their tour a couple nights ago with Journey. They're on a uh, they're on a stadium tour with Journey. And the fucking set list is absolutely incredible. And I just wanted to give them a hats off because. Um, this set list is, you know, they could easily just fucking play a bunch of fucking whatever. Here's the hits. Here's the, uh, newer stuff. These guys are basically focusing around heavily duty, heavily duty, uh, focusing heavily around the pyromania era, which is one of the greatest records of the 80s um hands down of course high and dry is a fucking masterpiece they don't really fuck with that i get it they're kind of older and their fans most of them don't even know what high and dry or on through the night is or the ep but this set list man they open up with rock rock till you drop whatever that's a thing you're going to get a fucking a stadium going with but then they go into rocket fooling armageddon Animal, Love Bites, the new song, Just Like 73. But then they play Coming Under Fire. They've never played this song ever in their career. It's a deep, deep track on Pyromania. And I'm watching it, right? You can watch the footage. They played the uh, Sirius XM Garage a week ago. And that's the first time they played it. And then they played it in the stadium Saturday night. And I'm watching it, man. And this is the sad kind of state that we're in, in the concert business where people are playing with tapes and all of that. Def Leppard, when I interviewed all the guys, you know, Phil and, 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 you know, I talked heavily about uh, the singing and stuff. And, you know, they're like, you know, Vivian's like, no, we, we took like three years of singing and they do it a cappella. They did it right in front of me at the whiskey. They fucking, you know, ba -na -na -na. you got me coming on to five, three part harmony, just coming out beautiful. Anyway, this is the state it is. They sound so fucking good that I'm just looking at it like, how is this even possible? And this is how it's possible. There's so much bad out there, uh, you know, in the quote unquote live world that when you see something good, you're like, Oh, there's gotta be fake. And you're just looking at it instead of going, nah, man, they rehearsed for a month. They fucking bust their ass. They work out. They're in shape. They take singing lessons. They warm up. They don't fucking do blow anymore. You know, any of that shit. And they're, they're on fire. And I can't even believe how amazing this coming under fire sounds. It is mind boggling. Go watch it on YouTube. Anyway, they play coming under fire too late for love. Die hard. The hunter, which is a fucking great song. 
two steps behind, of course, you know, you got to get the ladies, got to get the ladies their track. This guitar, don't know that song. Bring it on the heartbreak. Unbelievable. Switch 625. Now there's some high and drive for you right there. Rock of Ages, Photograph, Hysteria, Pour Some Sugar on Me. Great thing about Pour Some Sugar on Me is I can leave while they're playing that song. That's uh, the old satisfaction. Let's get the fuck out of here. Uh, don't need to hear that. 18 songs. I would say 16 of those are unbelievable. So hats off to um, Def Leppard because there was a while where they were just playing... Uh, the set list was just not who the band is, man. The band is a fucking rock band from the eighties. You're not sting, you know? So uh, you, you go out there and you play some of the best rock tunes from the eighties and you're going to just blow all the other eighties bands out of the fucking water. And that's what they've been doing now for like three years. They just, destroy people it's crazy man I, I hats off to that band man okay so anyway i just wanted to say that by the way uh i want to throw this out i uh, i've been having some acid reflex and um you know i'm fucking 58 i can't eat anything i can't drink anything anymore i can't fucking you know uh, there's no sugar, there's no booze, there's no drugs. Uh, and now it's like no hot sauce. My goddamn fucking lifeline is hot sauce and tacos. And so I've got a thing, which I didn't even know existed, called silent reflux. Now, I've had some acid reflux over the 20 years, like once a year. I'll be out at like three in the morning. I go over to fucking, uh, you know, what's that place called? I get some fucking night tacos. Um, Fred 62. They got these great breakfast tacos. And after a show, a show like two in the morning, I, I would go get tacos like once a year, eat them, go to bed. And, and in the middle of the night, you're just laying there. And all of a sudden like whoa, this actual hot lava comes up the first time it ever happened to me i didn't even know what the it only happens like once a year to me i didn't even know what the fuck it was i'm just laying there and it's like hot lava gas burp and, and but it's just got actual just toxic fire just when you're like oh oh what the fuck is that oh and it just gets up there and it scorches on your vocal cords and your esophagus. And you're just laying up like, what the fuck? And you're afraid to go back to sleep because you're, you're what was that? So I know not to fuck around late night with hot sauce. So a couple, I don't know, about a month ago, I like to go get my vocal cords checked once every three, four years just to make sure everything's all good because I kind of need them for what I fucking do 10 hours a week of fucking podcasting and talking on stage. I kind of need my voice. That's kind of how I eat. So I like to go get them looked at. So I go in there and uh, a friend of mine sent me to this super high end specialist in, um, in uh, Beverly Hills. Of course, I don't have uh, the health care or I got like the minimal health care but he doesn't take any of that shit. So it's 500 fucking dollars. And he looks down and he goes, Oh man, you got a crazy sinus infection and you got a, um, you got some acid reflux there and he's fucking, you know, I don't know if I did, I post the photo. I can't remember, but he's got the camera down my throat. I'm looking at the screen and it just looks like a blown out fucking vagina. <laughs> <laughs> he's all you see what's going on here you got the fucking white all over he's gonna do the podcast by the way too he said you got the fucking white refluxes and then you got the sinus infection how you you don't feel it i'm like i don't feel no sinus infection because to me i travel so much 
then I'm always like, oh, it's allergies. Like, I always feel like fucking, I've had allergies all my life. I wasn't supposed to drink milk when I was a kid, allergic to milk, had to bring soy, you know, it was like a powder soy. I brought it to, you know, summer camp. Kids are like, what is that shit? I just threw it away and drank milk so I didn't fucking have to hear it. And, uh, you know, so I've, I've been used to just fucking shitty sinuses all my life. So he's like, look, man, no more hot sauce. But here's the one that fucks me up the most. No sparkling water. Now, look, I quit soda. I quit sugar. I quit uh, caffeine, everything. And I've been drinking sparkling water for about seven years now. And I drink them all day and I fucking love them. You know, it was Topo Chico till I found out it was loaded with chemicals. Then I switched to Spindrift and uh, Recess. And I drink um, uh, this other one, Sondes or whatever now. And I fucking love them. And I'm thinking like, yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to live a, a long time now because I, I just drink soda water. He's like, well, those soda bubbles go down in your stomach and it's gas and it kind of explodes down there and throws up uh, like the, the exploding bubbles are frying on your esophagus. And it's like a, um, you know, it's called silent reflux. And I'm like, what the fuck? And he's like, yeah, you got to kind of, you got to watch out, man. Here, take this antacid. And I'm not taking one of those pepsins or whatever every day in my life. So then my buddy goes, oh, I got the fucking cure. You got to get this, this pillow, medcline or something. I got it sitting over here. And then you just kind of sleep kind of at an angle and you won't get the reflux anymore. Well, this pillow is the size of a fucking Toyota Celica. Gertie sleeps in my bed. She's looking at it like, what is this bullshit? You know, it's like a, it's like a giant thing. It's a, it's a ramp. And then it's, there's a big, another pillow. That's like a U and you sleep in it sideways. This is, I, I don't even know why I'm fighting death. There's no more fucking, no more, you know, pleasure other than comedy. Everything else is just fucking no sugar, no booze, no fucking drugs, no, uh, you know, no salt, which I don't fuck with salt anyway. Uh, you know, no more sparkling water, no caffeine. It's like, what the fuck am I? And then, you know, in this political climate of just fucking lunatics out there fighting each other over a zombie and a felon, I'm like, why am I fighting this? You know, why am I fucking trying to live so long? It's the only thing I'm living for is my love of comedy. But it's crazy to think the spark on water. So I'm not taking the fucking Pepsi. I've got the pillow and I'm, I'm supposed to go back and see him in two more weeks. I'm sleeping on the pillow and I want to see if he goes like, oh, it's all cleared up. Then I can just fucking drink the sparkling water that I goddamn love. And, uh, you know, no dairy, no peppermint. It's like a fucking, I wish I had it here. It was a, it's a giant list of everything, nothing. You can't eat shit. Oh my God. My buddy died from acid reflux. This is a true story. Guy was a fucking billionaire and he had heartburn every day. I never have heartburn. I don't have heartburn and I don't feel the acid reflux. Like I said, so I'm just walking around like everything's normal. I'm fucking healthy. Dean, look at you fools, you know, but no, I got the silent reflux new band. Um, Anyway, he had heartburn every day. And this fucker would just pound Tums all day like candy. I go, what are you doing? Ah, fucking heartburn. Yeah, heartburn. His reflex burned a hole in his esophagus and gave him esophagus cancer. And this fucker died. So I don't fuck around with acid reflex. But I need to try to find an organic way. No fucking pills to uh, keep myself together.
you know? Because now I'm drinking fucking flat water, bored out of my fucking mind, which, by the way, they don't make a kind of flavored water. You know, they make all the flavored waters um, sparkling. Like, if they made, like, a Topo Chico unsparkling, you know, with a little bit of lime flavor or whatever. Oh, what? by the way, I can't have any lime. So... You know, I don't know, man. God damn it, dude. It's fucking nuts. By the way, Gertie is 100% back to normal. She had that pinched nerve, and she is 100% back to normal. Um, uh, one more thing. Wilco dropped a kind of an EP record last week. It is called Hot Send Cool Shroud, and it is fucking great. I'm going to tell you that right now. I've been listening to it nonstop. Their last album, I did not like, uh, Cousin. But the one before that, Cruel Country, I think is their second greatest record ever. But this Hot Sun EP is blowing my fucking mind. First song, Hot Sun is amazing. Live It is a rad instrumental. Ice Cream's amazing. And then this song, Inside the Bell Bones. The, this thing, Jeff Tweedy, top 10, man. Jeff Tweedy, unreal how much I've been listening to this guy my most of my life, and he always delivers with something fucking great. If you didn't hear that Cruel Country record, I made it my number one record a few years ago. Uh, what year was that? 2022. It was my album of the year. And uh, now they got this EP, and it is just... It is just fucking fire, man. And then also, I want to turn you guys onto a record that somebody turned me on to. Um, a group called Floating Points. And the record is called uh, Promises. Came out in 2021. And if you're into kind of some uh, mellow Miles Davis craft worky shit, this record is a scorcher. Unreal. So uh, check that out. Uh, once again, it is uh, Floating Points. In incredible. Incredible. So that's some new music for you. The new Wilco and that Floating Points. Two, two great, great, great records. Um. I hope to see you guys at Minneapolis. I'm going to be out there at Acme July 24th through the 27th. And then August 30, 31 is the Blue Room in Springfield, Missouri. I'm doing La Jolla Comedy Store in November. Uh, some headlining dates out there. I really hope you guys can make it out to some of these shows because uh, it would really uh, mean the world to me if you bought a ticket. What are you doing, Gertie? Gertie just chewed the fuck out of this rawhide, just wore herself out. If you have any tips for the uh, reflex, hit me up on um, Instagram or Dean Del Rey at yahoo.com or um, Twitter slash X, wherever, man. Hit me up. I'm trying to find an organic way and also keep my fucking sanity, you know? I can't eat anything. Shout out to Norm. Um, Norm's Rare Guitars. They had me on their video channel last week. I absolutely love Norm. And every time I see the guy, I just fucking love him. And he is the king of all time of vintage guitars. Nobody comes close to him. You could think Carter Vintage. You could think, um, you know, all these other shops. No one comes close to what Norm did in his entire career and is still doing. And by the way, while I was there, he I was doing the interview and he was giving me some uh, kind words saying I was a great player and a great comedian and stuff. And it made me think for a minute. I haven't really sat down and dove into guitar in years. And I'll just pick it up. You know, I got one, one or two here and I'll just strum and fuck around but it made me think about when Ace went out in 96 with Kiss on the reunion. And I heard that Tommy Thayer had to teach him all his leads again. 
And people were going like, oh, man, what a loser. Aces doesn't even know his own stuff. But I was sitting at Norm Strumming, and I realized I uh, recorded a few records, and I couldn't play one of my songs right now if you put a gun to my head. I don't know how they go. I know the songs. I know the lyrics. I couldn't tell you how to play them because my brain is so, you know, engulfed in comedy. It is 100% comedy. I couldn't play one. It would take me a couple days to learn just a few of my songs because all of that is just out the door. Because at this point, all I give a fuck about is writing comedy and getting funny. So it's pretty interesting to think about how quick, well, it's not quick. It's been, you know, 16, 17 years since I played gigs uh, on guitar. I've sang some, you know, the ACDC shows, but uh, I haven't, it's, it's wild to think about. I used to play like two hour gigs, fucking 20 songs just in your head, knowing, you know, living on road could drive, bum, 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 you know? I couldn't even tell you right now. I think in about, a, if I played for a week, I would have it all down again, but man, it's interesting. Like I just, I hear my songs on my CD, my CD, and uh, I'm like, okay, was that Capo on the third fret? I, I couldn't even tell you. Anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there because it's, uh, it's wild when uh, something leaves your brain. I love you guys. Keep the candles lit. Come see me at the uh, Comedy Cellar all this week. And uh, stay cool out there. Watch out for the fucking fires. Join my Patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey for bonus episodes. And um, support the podcast that way. I hope to see you guys soon. Acme once again in Minnesota, Minneapolis, uh, Springfield, Missouri, La Jolla Comedy Store. All over the place. I love you guys.